Hey friends, I hope you're doing really well. Here it is, 2023, and uh, with that comes a whole new year of wildlife photography through the seasons. 2022 was uh, a really great year for me. I got to travel some places that I hadn't been and had planned on, and uh, I got to photograph things like like bears. Uh, ended the year in Florida, which was really amazing. There was tons of birds down there. Uh, so had a really great year. Um, but 2023 is coming up and with that, uh, there's going to be, uh, some trips I've got planned, uh, going to some places that I haven't been here in Alaska. I'm going to photograph some species, both birds and wildlife that I've never got to photograph before. So super excited and, uh, looking forward to some epic adventures here in Alaska. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be really fun. But, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I figured uh, I wanted to take a look back at 2022 and I wanted to share with you like some of my top 10 photos and um, just kind of talk about those with you and, and share some of those experiences because they were amazing and I had some incredible uh, adventures out there. So um, yeah, I wanted to share my top 10s. Uh, considering that my good friend and uh, phenomenal wildlife photographer, Sergis Hannon was right there with me through a lot of these. Um, I thought uh, it'd be really fun if he and I sat down and just kind of talked through some of these shared experiences that we had. And I would share my top 10, he could share his top 10. And uh, we could just kind of talk through some of these things and, and share our experiences and uh, talk about each one of these photos and share those all with you. So yeah, let's do that. Let's get Sergis on the line and let's get into it. All right, man. Well, how's it going? Welcome back to Alaska. Thanks. <laughs> it's going great. Yeah, I've uh, just been finishing uh, edit of a short-eared owl nice. from yesterday. And uh, yeah, got some some great opportunities. Let me close out of that real quick. So you said there's uh, like what four or five of them hanging around? Yeah, at least four. I think there are two different pairs. But who knows? I see two at a time most of the time. Yeah, one at one at one end of the spit, and the other pair at the end, other end. That's cool. That's nice to have some activity going on. Oh yeah. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I've lucked out in Homer lately. Um, you know, we had that hawk owl for the past couple of months. And yeah, uh, that was cool. someone saw it a few days ago, and I haven't seen it since I got back, but hopefully it's still around. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Uh, and we both got back from the Lore 48, which was a nice way to wrap up 2022, being out of state for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, much needed break. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but man, I feel pretty rejuvenated and and excited to get back to the snowy landscape and and shoot some birds in the in a fun environment. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think I probably could have used a little bit more time there. It was just like like Ray was saying, like Florida's like cheating because it really is. Yeah. It's like there's just so much around, you know. Um, so there you know with the abundance comes like the idea of coming back to alaska is like uh there's not that here <laughs> so and, you know besides the cold being able to like walk around in a t-shirt and shorts and you know photograph stuff is so nice versus like you know having to layer up and bundle up and you know all that stuff but i don't know i really don't i guess mind all that because it is it is an adventure and you know I think you're the same way, like adventure's fun no matter what. So there's always challenges to anything. Sure. Yeah. But I think I'm going to continue this yearly trend of heading down south for at least a couple of weeks yeah. <laughs> just to get away. Yeah. Just to uh, take a break from the shoveling and the <laughs> <laughs> all the car issues. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Us too. I think we're going to like maybe try for two months next year. Nice. Yeah. It was it was good, man. I, I think I'll be ready by that time to come back and, you know, get started with some winter projects and all that. So. Yeah, I just took a look at that barred owl shot she sent me that super yeah. vertical crop. That was pretty. That's <laughs> nice actually a stitched. Uh, I stitched that together because um, I was shooting. I think I had my 500 on at that time and uh, 
all that all that Spanish moss hanging down. Oh yeah. I wanted to include all that. So I just I shot the owl and then I just kept shooting as I went down and nice man. Yeah. I wanted to include all that because it was so cool. So that's a huge that's a huge photo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Lots yeah. of pixels in there. Yeah. So cool though, man. Like those owls down there are just amazing. And uh having never photographed them before, I got great opportunities with two different pairs so that was pretty awesome that's great isn't it crazy how dark their eyes are it's almost like a pure black i think it's supposed to be dark brown technically but every time i look at them it's like that's black that thing wants to kill you yeah. <laughs> like an alien it's just yeah wild they're just so bizarre especially like i hear a lot of them like to fish crayfish and like uh hunt by the riverside and they're into a lot of aquatic stuff which is super weird to me for an owl you know yeah i think they're like the red-shouldered hawks there there was a ton of red-shouldered hawks and uh i think with the diverse kind of habitats that are around you know not only are there squirrels um which i'm sure make up their diet but also a lot of lizards and snakes and all kinds of other little little things like that which you know um can be easily picked off you know creates like a nice food source for quite a few of the different raptors around so yeah pretty cool red shouldered hawks yeah. everywhere that's so cool <laughs> it, it, yeah. mostly on power lines which was like, right right <laughs> <laughs> that's like the shot you yeah same want. here yeah. yeah, I spent a couple of weeks uh, during this Christmas break in Colorado. And uh, yeah, most of them were red-tailed hawks, you know, pretty typical for the Midwest and yep. Southwest, pretty much most uh, states in the U.S., just yep. by far the most common hawk. So yeah. it's like kind of get kind of get sick of that pretty quick. <laughs> but every now and then you'll double check and, oh, nope, that's a rough-legged or that's a ferruginous, you know. Just uh, just barely enough of uh, variety there to to keep you uh, interested and keep you double checking all the hawks and things. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, red shoulder is the only hawk that I saw besides. Um, well, it was the only hawk, and then we had uh, uh, kestrels were all over the place, but they were extremely skittish. But I didn't see any red tails um, when I was there, and. I think I saw one Merlin, Dang. but it was mostly all the red shouldered. Hmm. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. It's and like then, a different country over there. Oh, yeah. It totally was, man. It was so, you know, it was crazy. But what are they called? The snail kites? Yeah. You guys yeah, were I shooting? Met up with Ray and Emily, and uh, we went after snail kites and had a blast. It was so fun. Yeah. These birds are crazy. Yeah. It totally looks like South African or some wild. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, crazy you know species that you wouldn't expect to see here i mean uh yeah i mean honestly the first shots you sent me i was like i didn't know that bird existed <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm sure matter. there's there's a lot of stuff like that you know texas and uh arizona right. i've just haven't spent much time over there there's so many places we could go you know like right <laughs> so many different species all over the place texas has got like green jays and all kinds of other cool birds and yeah wild even birds. the scrub jays like in colorado man they're stunning yeah yep i mean i obviously grew up here and the uh, stellar jays are just everywhere so i always thought the blue jays were the cool ones you know down south i'd be all excited when i saw a blue jay in indiana um but a lot of people down there get really excited about the seller's chase. So I guess just a matter of perspective, matter of what, what you could use to. <laughs> yeah, that's totally true, man. Well, um, we had a lot of adventures together sure the past did. year. We did some cool stuff and uh, thought it'd be cool to go over this, our top 10 list together and kind of share our photos. I'm sure we have some that, uh, at least I do, from my adventures with you that ended up oh, yeah. my top and uh so let's let's talk about them let's get into it uh why don't you share yours first and then i'll go through mine and we can just uh 
we'll share everybody. Hopefully you've got the ability to share your screen. How's that working? Nice. All right. Well, I guess I'm starting off with this uh, great <laughs> horned owl. <laughs> you know, this is one of those shots where people are asking if it's photoshops, that type of thing. And, you know, it's this is the only decent shot I have of a great horned owl. So I can totally understand why people would assume that. Um, a lot of folks get the nice shots of them perched in the daytime or towards sunset. And uh, I just haven't lucked out and uh and had that experience but what i did have was a pair of great horned owls that started showing up above my house uh for the past couple of months and so they would just be hooting back and forth they'd wake me up uh as i'm trying to fall asleep wake me up early in the morning it was constant and uh and so you know one of these nights i i was like screw it i'm gonna see what i can make happen there was a full moon and uh brought my tripod out there and you know with with enough uh biting through the thick branches and trying to get a little bit of foreground in there and and waiting for the perfect perch um i was able to just line it all up and i mean all the credit here i think goes to the owl for just choosing such a perfect yeah, tree. Right. <laughs> yeah that's such a cool shot i remember you telling me about that you're in fact, like we, I think we were on and doing something together, uh, driving around, and you were telling me that yeah, you've got some owls hanging around, and then like you, you go back and you get this, and I was like, you pretty much blew my mind with what you were able to get there. So yeah, that's that's pretty epic, man. Thanks. Worth, yeah, I think worth I remember it. texting you. I was like, I'm gonna go try to shoot the owls above my property. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and to walk away with something like this, though, man, like, you know, it really makes all that bushwhacking uh, totally worth it because, you know, you kind of get uh, this vision for it. And then you're like, okay, what do I need to do to make this vision happen once you kind of get an idea of what's possible there? And, right. uh, you know, it's like once you get that uh, and the bird stays or the animal or whatever, and you get that vision, like, there's nothing you won't do to, like, <laughs> <laughs> make your way yes. you know to to get it so like yeah totally oh 100 percent. and you, you know how you know lining up these kind of silhouettes goes yep. there's only one angle you can shoot it from and so i had to pin myself between a few different very dense trees and i was trying to bury my tripod in there i ended up just like throwing my glove out of frustration because i just <laughs> I just couldn't deal with it. Uh, I was making so much noise and uh, everything I was holding uh, just kind of got in my way. So, but we got there and uh, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. That's such a good photo. Appreciate it. All right. So moving on. So this is a giant Pacific octopus. Uh, I, I just had to put something underwater in this uh, selection because yeah. That's just a huge passion of mine. I've been getting into it over the past couple of years. And uh, I was out spear fishing with a buddy of mine uh, going for rockfish. And I brought my camera along, got an underwater housing. And we were getting some fish, got a couple, and uh, was paddling along. And I noticed this little shadow uh, just moving along right uh, right along the C4. It was maybe 25, 30 feet. And, uh, hmm. and so I, I stopped for a second, check it out. And sure enough, it, it stops right when I stop. And it's, it's this camouflaged octopus, giant Pacific octopus. Wow. And it, it blends in so well to the rocks. Um, this was, you know, before this shot. So he was, he was kind of yellow. He had all these different things like poking out here and there. Um, it was just instant camouflage. And so I tell my friend, uh, there's an octopus here. Hang on to this spot for me. I'm going to go paddle back to the boat and grab my camera. So I drop off the spear gun, get the camera set up. And uh, and luckily, he was still there when I got back. And uh, my friend used his little pole spear to kind of mark where he was at. And so it was just this big, long thing 
uh, coming straight down to where the octopus was. And the octopus ends up reaching his tentacle out and wrapping around it. Oh, and it was like this crazy alien human connection moment. <laughs> huh. It was just, it was just so cool. And, uh, and so then I was able to just watch him make his way into the den. Uh, and you can see all, all these shells right in front. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, just, just incredible. I was able to wedge my housing right up against the rocks and, and just barely make it work. But yeah. It's so cool, Good. man. And, and so unique too. Like you just don't see that very often. Uh, you know, especially up here in Alaska where there's not a lot of people doing that. Yeah, that's, it's for sure a, a fun thing to be exploring and trying to mess around with, but that is part of the difficulty is that there's no one really doing it. So you kind of just have to figure it out on your own. Yep. Um, Blazing yeah, it, trying to balance the thing, the housing, because I've got my dome port in front and that thing is incredibly buoyant. So when I'm trying to free dive with this whole rig, it's uh it's just trying to pivot around and oh, yeah. almost impossible to do underwater videography with it. Every now and then if I take enough pictures, I come up, come away with a decent photo, <laughs> but it's one of those brain prey situations for sure. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Awesome. And then. All right. <laughs> Top did pop in. That's so cool. So I went out with a group of friends out with uh, Coldwater Alaska Taxi, and I've gone out with them a few times, shot puffins with them a few times, but there was a captain there I'm pretty good friends with. He had the brilliant idea of dropping the bow of the ship down, and so we can all lie down, shoot from the bow. Somehow it's, it helps with the tolerance the puffins don't seem to mind it as much as like a mm -hmm. typical boat approaching and so you're able to get eye level uh depending on the wind direction they usually fly into the wind and so we were able to line it all up we saw that they were feeding in this tide grip and yeah you take enough photos and eventually something like this happens yeah that's awesome but I it, love the, it's uh... Yeah, the fish hanging out, and that you can see that one, the the eye on the other one, uh, on the the one on the outer, you can see yeah. the eye. So that's that's really cool. They can carry up to like fifteen, possibly more, at a time. It's nuts. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. Um, awesome. But what I found crazy and fascinating was that you have to use a minimum, you know, thirty two hundred sometimes four thousandth of a second to actually freeze the motion of these guys they're just incredibly fast <laughs> wow that's <laughs> that's nuts yeah and i mean you were there when we were shooting uh horn puffins and seward and uh yeah they weren't quite this close but same yeah. kind of concept just a lot of repetition <laughs> enough frames per second will get you the shot but yep just i was pretty proud of it, it. Yeah, I love the low level of that one and that you can see the water spraying behind it and just the action and like it's got all the elements, you know, um, the fish coming out of his bill. You know, if this if this was just a puffin taken off, like it'd still be cool. But the fish in the bill is just totally makes it makes it that special, you know. Appreciate it. Yeah, it, it kind of just worked out in a, a really elegant way. Just yeah, the way the front needle fish kind of swoops down <laughs> it's like i couldn't oppose that better yeah super nice i can see why that one made it to your top 10 for sure all right northern hawk owl i think i mentioned we had this guy hanging out uh just pretty darn close to my house uh so i was incredibly lucky to live near this guy's habitat this winter and we just we got to watch him hunt constantly um a lot of times it was it's hard to actually capture him picking out a vole or something because they go fly halfway up the spruce tree and kind of bury themselves to make sure none of the other crows and magpies all that get to him um 
So I didn't, didn't have any great shots of him hunting, but what I did get is, you know, plenty of environment to work with because he was just a few minutes drive from my house. So anytime it was kind of interesting lighting or interesting conditions, I could just head straight there, see what he was up to, which is just a luxury that, you know, I'm just (laughs) blessed to have. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Uh, So yeah, things all just kind of worked out and I was able to snag this minimalist kind of high key shot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just really liked the pose he gave me and the mood. And once again, you know, he picked a nice tree top. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I like the, I like the simplicity of it, but also like the, comp- it, it's, it's weird. It's got this sim- simplistic uh, feel, but it's when you really look at it and start, start examining it, you realize how uh, complex it is because of all the, you know, the snowflakes fallen, which actually kind of that texture of the snowflakes kind of matches the plumage that he's got. That's kind of speckling, you know, the spackled kind of um, white that he has. Never even, yeah, never made that connection. But totally um, see that though. I also just like any kind of atmosphere that you get in photos, you know, whether it's rain or snow or, you know, that kind of the, that when the elements are there uh, in a photo that I think makes it that extra special. And this is cool because you can tell it's really coming down. Like it's snowing pretty hard there. And this guy's just patiently just waiting up in this tree, you know, for something to happen. And um, it tells a really great story of, of, you know, their hardiness and, you know, the, the, the need and necessity to hunt even in the worst conditions. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good reminder to stick it out sometimes when it is tough conditions to be out in definitely wasn't the funnest snowshoeing around getting after this guy, (laughs) but yeah, sometimes it pays off. And I think those are the most, the special photos, you know, the ones that, uh, are really a challenge to capture and the ones no one else is getting because it is a challenge. Yep. Yeah. Super nice. Oh, you're going to see a few shots from, from this Denali trip. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, this was just a, a trip of a lifetime. You know, uh, I was there early September. I, I know, you met up with me at one point there, but uh, I, w- I was here with a, a friend from college. And, you know, on this day, I think the first couple of days, actually, we weren't seeing a whole lot, but we knew how incredible these fall colors were, yeah. you know, just, yeah. I don't think it, uh, I don't think it really gets better than that, at least at the kind of altitude that we were shooting at mostly. Yeah. That's pretty much the peak of the colors there is like, early September. Yeah. Yeah, First week of September. Right. So we weren't seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of grizzly bears. We weren't seeing a lot of, we didn't see the hawk owl. We didn't see a lot of stuff that we expected to see. But after a couple days, just taking the bus in and out, uh, we eventually run into this guy and, and a few other bulls and cows. They're just marching along. And, uh, Luckily, we were able to hop off the bus, go kind of march uh, about a half mile in front of where these guys were headed. Mm-hmm. So we t- took this kind of goalie to kind of obscure ourselves and and make sure we were out of sight. And uh, we ended up just ahead of them. Uh, we timed it pretty well. You know, things worked out. And uh, and one of the younger ones, actually, they first approached us and... Uh, I mean, I think it was just incredibly curious. So it would just walk right up to us. Uh, I've got some other good shots of him, but uh, can't beat this massive bull that eventually yeah. made his way over. That and so cool. yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else to say about it other than I'm just incredibly happy about the pose, the composition. Yeah, I was just really stoked about it. The contrast with the spruce and all the crazy red, yellow fall colors. Yeah, I remember you showing me this and I was, I think my jaw dropped. I was like, oh my gosh. Because we went, like, we had a great time when we went in uh, early August. Uh, yeah, when things were a little greener. Things were, yeah, things were a lot greener. I think there was just some uh, speckling of color starting to appear, if I remember right. Just some, like, yellows here and there. Um, yeah. But dang, like, 
I think if I was, if I wanted to do that again, I think I would definitely uh, do early September, you know, a month later, I think would be like, like what you did here would be prime. So yeah, pretty awesome, man. Like that was a pretty awesome opportunity right there. Yeah. Yeah. And my friend, uh, Evan Pack, he's uh, from Minnesota, a friend from college. And this was his first time really getting to see Alaska. So nice. he had the trip of a lifetime. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> cool. And uh, this was a shot that you were here with, uh, here with me for. Uh, I have a feeling a similar shot might make your list as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we were just uh, to give some backstory. Uh, I think we were mostly shooting some shorebirds is for the, well, that was our, yeah, that was our goal for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Spring migration. And, uh, so we were just driving up and down the beaches. You get these incredible views of, uh, Mount Iliamna and Mount Redoubt from across Cook Inlet. Yeah. And I don't think we had great luck to be honest with the shorebirds this day. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I think, think we uh, had a few after this, but like, I remember yeah. we were like, oh, look at all those eagles up there. And like, we didn't even make it to the, our original destination when we were going to go there just because like we stopped here for all these eagles. And like, if we hadn't have stopped there, you know, like you and I both are kind of like, um, there's more interesting th things to shoot than eagles, you know, because we just, we shoot them so much all the time. Uh, yeah. or have you know that they, they kind of get they kind of get old and so like it was just weird that you know we'd both decided okay you know let's just do this and um i think it had a, a i don't know combination of like some of the light that was going on that made us stop and just the proximity of all the eagles but oh that was definitely a factor yeah yeah there's some fish on the on the beach there and these guys are scavengers so there's a a decent sized group of them flying in and out. So seemed like a good opportunity to mess around with some wider angle stuff, especially. And so, yeah, we just crawled up to some of the fish and waited around. Eventually they started flying back and yeah, there are a couple of beauties in there. Um, this being one of them. And I just got kind of sick of the 200 to 500. I've <laughs> like Jamin said, I've shot that a million times, even in decent lighting. So I just wanted to see what else I could do with it. And so, yeah, so I just wanted to switch it up. I uh, grabbed the 70 to 200, which I was trying out for the first time. It was your old lens and uh, it was a Tamron. And man, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. I was a little concerned about how quick the autofocus would be. But uh, yeah, this guy started flying in. We were both firing away there and uh <laughs> we both got some some awesome stuff out of it. Yeah, it was so cool. It was so cool. I remember watching him come in low off to the right, coming up down the beach. And then um I think we were both on him. And I had my 500 F4, but I had right beside me my Z62 with my 2470 on. And, uh, I had, I had switched to that I, for some reason. And man, like the timing to switch to that was perfect because that bird just came in and then like, he just swooped up and came in for a landing right here. And like, what a spot to pick to like swoop in for a landing with those clouds behind there like that. Just the rays of light coming down was unreal. That's like the placement couldn't have been more perfect. Yeah. And. We both nailed focus, you know. Yeah. We crush it. <laughs> yep. It's pretty awesome. I think I remember coming in hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Great. But uh yeah, it was awesome. That was, nice. a, that was a fun day. Yep. So yet another shot from our from my fall Denali trip. Uh so there's gonna be another photo uh from this same afternoon, but we got to spend a, a decent chunk of time with these rams. It was one of one of those days I was really slow in the rest of the park. And so, you know, our main goal that day was to go hike up to these doll sheep. We saw them from the bus and we knew that they were going to be pretty accessible. They're actually much lower than they typically are. They're in some of the like dwarf birch, some of the nice fall colors. And so that was some extra motivation to make the hike up there. And uh, 
we weren't really sure how how good they're going to be in terms of or how comfortable they they would be um i've heard different things like some will run away uh within 50 60 yards um others are much more tolerant uh so we just were very careful in our approach so they kind of zigzagged made sure we didn't make uh direct eye contact and, and head straight towards them at any point uh it was a very slow kind of stalk and by the time we got close enough for you know a decent 500 millimeter shot hmm. we could tell that they just did not care <laughs> <laughs> whatsoever uh and so that was great you know they were all kind of bedded down it was pretty bright sunny uh we were kind of just waiting for things to get more interesting uh activity to pick up and and for the light to come together and yeah by the end of it um this guy just walked out in the perfect position we were all just kind of chit-chatting we had been shooting them for a few hours at that point and it was uh they were one to to call it a day and, and head back down the mountain this was me, uh, my friend from college, and a few other people that got off the bus at that time. And yeah, it was probably my last shot of the day was this shot. Wow. And he just happened to walk out from the rest of the group and, and go check out this little trail. Nice. And yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better environmental portrait. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. My mind just like, of course, like I, I focus on the, on the ram. But then, like, after that, I start exploring around in the shot. You know, my mind, my, like, I go past the ram to the valley below and looking at the rocks and the mountains in the background. Like, it's just got so many elements that are interesting to look at um, besides just the the how you composed it, you know. So, yeah, man, nicely done here. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I think it was a 50 millimeter uh could have been 70 to 200 <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I love that lens <laughs> it's yeah. been working out really well all right so this was a pacific loon that we got pretty close to home uh which was kind of fun you know uh yeah. the only ones that i'd heard about were up in your territory and, and so it's cool to have that yeah yeah I mean, we'll get them um, off the spit from time to time, wintering populations, but never, I, I've never heard of a, a breeding pair out, yeah. out by Homer. So this was a fun little, uh, yeah, fun little subject to be shooting uh, last summer. And I went out with my buddy, Joey Hausler and uh, camped out intending to get the you know 4 30 a.m sunrise and yeah, see what we could yeah. make happen uh we had kayaks we were very careful with how closely we approached because there was a pair and they were definitely nesting and so we try not to get very close to their nesting area uh but there were times where that would kind of open up some opportunities and they would mm. come swim and check us out um you know none of the typical aggressive uh uh signs so we were very careful about our approach but eventually uh i believe this one yeah this one was taken with the kayak and so this was kind of in the edge of the lake uh where he was out hunting and and so i was able to slowly make my way over just as the light was coming through this beautiful fog covering the pond and uh yeah and it just worked out i i didn't really know what i had at the time you know a lot of it's like trying to use the live view and <laughs> i don't even know how to explain it but trying not to tip the kayak you know is the first priority <laughs> uh right. you know big heavy 200 500 setup and uh yeah so it was one of those situations that you don't really know what you get until you yeah. look at it in the post-processing yeah but it all just came together. I actually intentionally took my lens hood off for this shot and it, it kind of created some interesting light leak effects because there was some condensation that I didn't intentionally do it to get this effect, but I intentionally took it off in order to kind of 
uh, clean, clear off all the condensation that was so quickly building on the front element. Yeah. And so I was just constantly, you know, take a shot, wipe it off, take a shot, wipe it off. It was, uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, so that was just kind of the unexpected consequence of that was this interesting light leaking through. Yeah. You know, when I shot loons at at the lake, uh, that I go to for them, um, depends on the time of year, but often, uh, when it starts cooling down a little bit in the, in the mornings is when I often end up with some tons of condensation, um, on the, on the front lens element. And it can get super annoying. Like it really kind of stops you from shooting for a while. Cause you've got to, you know, work to clean up that, uh, the mess that's in the front of your lens element. And, yeah. um, yeah, it can really bog up the works. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely didn't help that I had my waders on and I was kind of tucking my camera in, in my waders just just to make sure it's uh, going to stay on my, on my person and in the kayak. So yeah. it was very humid and that was not helping, but you do what you got to do. <laughs> yep. Nice, man. Yeah, it's a beauty. I love the light in there. Yeah, it was, a, it was just a magical morning. Uh, that's definitely something, especially if this pair comes back. There, were, there was also a red-throated loon pair that showed up at one point in the same pond. Wow. Um, so just cool spot. And uh, if there's any kind of activity uh, this next summer, definitely going to be camping out there for a few days. <laughs> but uh, yeah, moving on. So this is another yeah. Jamin Circus duo uh, experience. And Dude, that was so wild. Yeah, that was, that was a killer trip to Kodiak. And, uh, I mean, I, I had been there for a few days, uh, wasn't able to shoot all that much. Uh, I kind of had some other stuff going on there, but Jamin was there with, uh, our buddy Rob and you guys were telling me he went out to this beach that I've been to before, but I didn't know that there were bears there. And I think you saw upwards of 10 the first morning some something yeah, crazy yeah, like there was that a bunch there this morning or uh, yeah not this morning but that morning there was a bunch of them there sure and a lot of them were you know it was so dark that we we uh couldn't really see like you you definitely couldn't you could see them there like as shadows but you, you know there was no photographic opportunities so yeah yeah it seems like one of those spots uh popular fishing area mm -hmm. so the bears kind of dip in and out quickly before all the people start showing up. Yeah. So we, we go the next day and sure enough, I think we saw six or seven that day. And, uh, man, that was pretty incredible. Uh, saw this guy coming from the, I think this was the one that came all the way to the mouth of the river and then started coming back our way. Yeah. I think it might've been uh yeah we regardless wow. regardless yeah uh this was you know just as the light was starting to peek through and not yeah. lots of color uh starting to hit the clouds and you and i just got down on the on the river and uh rob was behind us saying i'm gonna look around make <laughs> sure there are no bears yeah. coming our way which is probably a smart thing to do in hindsight but yeah it was totally worth it man <laughs> yeah uh, and, yeah this know, guy just came right up he started swimming around and munching yeah. on some fish scraps just incredible and this is this is one of those examples uh i know you talked with ray about the benefits of having a zoom lens and uh, and i shot that 200 500 for years before i got a 500 prime and i knew that going into the prime that was going to limit me um and I, I lamented over that a little bit but um i love the effects that the prime gives me but at the same time uh i miss i miss using the 200 500 just because like i see what you're getting with that uh when you're able to just you know zoom out a little bit and include some of the sky and then uh get it a little bit smaller in frame and you know do some of that which i really enjoy um, I miss out on that oftentimes just because like my lens choices, you know, grabbing that 500 instead of the 200, 500. So, um, 
there was definitely opportunities to kind of explore my lens choices a little bit more and like, you know, not necessarily always go for the grab, the, the big gun. Yeah. And, uh, the only reason I have that one for the 200 or 500 is cause that's, that's the ones I have. I don't have a fast prime. So, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate the versatility and all that, but yep. there are definitely some drawbacks, you know, shooting birds. I just, I don't get all the same sharpness. I don't get the same depth of field. It's just, uh, not quite the same quality level when it really comes down to it, but yeah. it's one of those choices everybody has to make. So, yeah, well, you do, you do great with what you have. So, and that's the important thing is using what you have to the best of its ability. And, uh, you know, you do it, you do that really well. So. Do you have any kind of, uh, plans on, I don't know, carrying a separate body with a wider lens when you're in a situation like this? I mean, we're crawling around in the bud, so yeah. there's not a whole lot of opportunity to have a yeah. bunch of gear tagging along. You know, I, I intend to a lot of times, and I've got a cotton carrier that I can, that I can throw another body on my hip if I want to. Um, and so I, you know, I should be doing that. I should have, you know, especially in this situation, I should have had my Z6 II with my like 70 to 200 or something. Um, and, uh, I think if I go to Kodiak again in the coming years, I will definitely do that where I have, you know, the, the Z6 II with a 70 to 200 on me, because I think I missed some opportunities of, of getting some wider shots just because like I had the prime with me all the time. Um, but, and then I, I switched it out, you know, at the last day I decided to, you know, switch it out and, and go for some wider stuff, but I think it really would have benefited me to, uh, just kind of carry that with me. So yeah, just more of, more of that carrying it with me sure. when I can and, and just dealing with some of the hassle of having that extra weight hanging off you and the awkwardness that kind of comes with it. But, you know, when you're able to switch out something so quickly, it kind of makes it worth it. So, Yeah. Yeah, and then we ran into that goshawk later on in the trip, and then you had your seventy to two hundred on. So it's like, yeah, there is no right answer. <laughs> there isn't, man. You just gotta you gotta pick something and stick with it, and decide that you're gonna make yeah. the most out of it. And I still haven't actually edited that shot, which is crazy. But and now I'm behind, super behind with Florida stuff, and I'm gonna be editing stuff for a long time. So. <laughs> You there know, goes, right? some people, uh, <laughs> some people might see that as a, a good thing, more gems to discover. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I should probably get moving along. All right. It's number 10, right? Is it, or I think it is. This is the finale. <laughs> and, uh, yep. Shot number three of my Denali fall trip. And. Yeah, so after we were sitting down with those sheep, getting comfortable with them, and and uh, the light was starting to come through, you know, a little bit of clouds uh, blocking out the sun, and everything was just starting to seem like it was about to come together, and some of the sheep started moving around a little bit. But then all of a sudden, they jumped up, looked up at this ridge above us, and... I thought it was a grizzly at first. Um, I didn't really, couldn't even comprehend what animal could be crawling around the mountains um, up there. And so it took took a little bit to process. Um, eventually, you know, he just kept on coming down the mountain, coming towards us. And sure enough, uh, I yelled out to everybody, <laughs> there's a lynx. And so we all turned that way, stopped shooting these these darn sheep <laughs> and uh and just watch him come down the mountain and he clearly sees that that we're here you know yeah. he looks us all directly in the eye and just keeps on going uh he does not care that we are there uh he just wants to take a look at these sheep wow. and so you know is is maybe a four or five minute stock um and he made his way all the way to this beautiful yellow bush and ended up sticking his whole body in there with just his little tail sticking out. Wow. Uh, and man, the, the sheep did not know what to do. They were running back and forth, you know, herd mentality, just kind of, what do we do with this situation? Is this thing actually trying to take us down? It's half our size. Yeah. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, who knows what, what was going on in the Lynx head. Mm. But my theory is, is that he's a cat. Cats will be cats. They have that kind of predatory instinct, no matter yeah. what it is. He's and uh, I think he was, yeah, for sure. I think he was sussing length. it out, seeing if any of them had a broken leg or something. Yep. Uh, uh, to me, uh, he looked like a pretty healthy Lynx. Uh, I don't think he was desperate enough to, to actually go for one. Yeah. But you still got to check it out, you know? Yep. <laughs> yep. Cause Lynx got to be Lynx. Yeah. Oh, man, that's such an epic shot. I love the lineup of the sheep. Uh, I love, of course, that yellow bush and that Lynx right there. It just tells such a compelling story um, that you've gotten. One of the, one of the cool things is that these bookend sheep are both pointed in. And that's just unreal that, that you got that um, because it's just, it, it completes this composition in such an amazing way that couldn't have been achieved had one of them, you know, had that one up in the corner uh, been pointed the other direction. You know, the fact that they're all pointed towards the the links is just, yeah, man, it's so good. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how much I can really take credit for, you know? Yeah. So well, you saw the situation and you made the most of it. So. <laughs> yep yep i mean i feel like with every photograph there's there's some level of skill and there's some some amount of just being out there you put the time in and you happen to come across the incredible beha behavior because you were out there right now and, did uh, you say this was your 50 millimeter with this no no this was 200 to 500 okay, uh okay i think it was around 300 millimeter okay nice. yeah yeah cool, man. yeah so you've got um you got some awesome images here and uh i mean the, all the ones that you didn't share i mean you you crushed it the past year um but these are uh like incredible selection of images and i think any photographer would be thrilled to have uh these in their portfolio so well done sir appreciate it yeah and so you've got uh do you have a place where these live where people can go and see them for themselves yeah i've actually uh got my top 10 put up on my website nice and so you can we can probably include a link but it's yeah, we'll, just we'll and in dot com. yeah cool nicely done man appreciate it yeah i'm stoked about this year we've got yeah. some fun stuff planned all right, I will stop sharing my screen. Cool. All right. Well, I think it's my turn. Um, let me get my screen up so I can share that. All right. Are you seeing this? Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. So I'll just dive in here and uh we'll just go for it. So um I've got a buddy that that came up and he was doing some tours. Uh he lives out of state, but he lived up here for years and we were roommates uh for a while and uh he called me up and he's like, Hey man, I've got some tours coming up. Uh, I'm going to come up and make some extra money and uh, I need a place to stay. Would it be okay if I stayed with you? And of course I was like, yeah, you know, I haven't seen him in years and it'd be great to catch up and hang out. And um, so the last day um, I, I, I ran him out to uh, Anchorage to catch his tour bus at the hotel. And, you know, he was going to go on the last leg of his tour there. And so it was September, um, early September there. And uh, I decided to take off. Uh, after that, I dropped him off at like 6 a.m. or something. And so I had a little window of time. And so I decided oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go see if I can find a moose. You know, it's, it's, uh, the conditions were overcast. And um, I thought, you know, why not? I'm going to go for it, see what I can find. So I went back to where, uh, where a bunch of moose had been seen that year and uh, or earlier. And, um, you know, just decided to, look around and it did, I didn't get very far. And I found this bull, uh, it was with another bull and a cow. And, um, 
you wouldn't know it, but the airport is right out there. Like I'm shooting towards the airport, but uh, it's up far enough up on a hill that you don't see the fence or, you know, luckily there wasn't any <laughs> airplanes taking off. Although that kind of might've been cool to have an airplane in there taking off. But um, I kind of had this vision of uh, actually before I even set out, I had this uh, vision of getting kind of a more silhouette uh shot where the moose is a little bit smaller in frame and uh man the situation just worked out perfectly i was able to kind of work my way back behind uh on the other side of the field behind this bull and he just stood there and so um yeah man i just like the way the mountains after you know it's kind of funny because the mountains and everything were an afterthought like i wasn't planning on um getting the mountains in there you know, of course you're going to, but like, I didn't realize what I had until like I'm post-processing and I realized how cool the mountains actually looked back in there. Um, and so I, like, I just loved how you just get an essence of those mountains, but it's got those dark clouds and all the elements and, um, man, I just ended up loving, loving that shot. Uh, we're just so happy with what I ended up with because I really tried doing something different this year than what I had done the last year. Uh, the year previous, I had, you know, uh, taken out my 500 and shot moose pretty much exclusively with my 500 millimeter, which gave me some really great, like full frame portrait shots, but I missed out on getting a lot of, uh, moose in their habitat type stuff. And that's what I really kind of wanted to go for. Um, after I had gotten, you know, those, those nice clean portraits. So this year, man, I really, um, decided that like the 70 to 200 was what I was going to use for the most part. Uh, I think I took my 2470 at some points, but, uh, let's see what, what was this one? Yeah. It's 70 to 200 and, uh, mm -hmm. it worked out so well. Like it was just like picture perfect. He's just standing there in this field for a few seconds, just, hanging out and just posing it, it was just couldn't have asked for more so yeah it's pretty awesome yeah man when you sent this to me originally i'm like where did you get this shot i mean <laughs> i can't even i still don't really know the location uh but it's it's yeah. a tough place to kind of include some mountains for sure especially without fence lines airplanes buildings everything in that area so it's uh yeah i mean you know props to you for just being creative enough to to see that opportunity and then obviously it all just came together and you walked right where you needed needed him to be yeah but uh yeah man I, I just love the mood in this shot holy cow it's uh i mean you know someone would be tempted to bring out the detail in the moose and and you know to kind of include more detail and and all that but i i just love the the decision you made to just go you know almost full silhouette on the body and uh it, it's just got such a mood to it you know it's it reminds me of a kind of a a western like almost like a, a <laughs> cowboy tilting his hat down and howdy partner <laughs> yeah that's, that's cool. the same kind of vibe it's uh yeah i just love it man Thanks, man. Yeah, I didn't do it. Like as far as post-processing goes, like I didn't do a whole lot to it. I think I, I used a gradient filter on the sky above just to darken down the, some of the clouds on the top and then darken down a little bit of the uh, grass at the bottom. But other than that, I think maybe I try, I straightened my horizon line and that was pretty much it. Like, I, yeah, I, I just didn't want to... Uh, I like the mood, how it was so much that I didn't want to bring up the detail because it I thought that would just kind of ruin the mystery that it kind of it gave to me. So yeah, it's pretty yeah, well, it's it's fantastic. Thanks, man. Moving on. Uh another silhouette, actually. And mm -hmm. uh <laughs> yeah, man, this was we had a absolute blast on this trip. So you and I went up. Um we spent what what did we do three days in denali was that about two or three days yep. yeah um we were well we were originally we were gonna go um do the russian river 
like we had plans to do the Russian river. We were going to spend three days on the Russian river chasing bears and other stuff. And then you got COVID and like totally disrupted those plans. And you weren't sure if you're going to get better or not. And so I started thinking like, all right, what's an alternative, you know, like, I don't want to go chase bears by myself on the, on the Russian river. Just what, like, I felt like I needed, uh, I I felt like that was a two man job, you know, like (laughs) putting yourself in like some risky situations I felt like. And, um, I started remembering like, oh yeah, I, I knew some people that had really good luck with caribou and Denali. So that, that idea started germinating in my mind and taking hold and, I started getting excited about it. I was like, man, you know what? I think this could could be a really cool trip to go and, uh, you know, I'd been chomping at the bit for caribou for years and really wanted some nice caribou shots. So I started getting more and more excited and started sharing that with you. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do the, I, th- I think I want to go up and uh, try for caribou in Denali. And then it's so funny because like you start feeling better and you're like, yeah, I think I'm in. Like, you know, if I get feeling better, I think yeah, that sounds cool. And And then like, by the time it, it came to uh, uh, came to go, you were feeling well enough to travel and make the trip. And so like, yeah, you showed up and we packed up and we were out of there. And uh, this the bus dropped us off on this ridge and we spent, gosh, I don't know how many hours we spent on this ridge, but um, we watched. I remember we were watching these two caribou way up on this ridge line and they're working their way up. And I was like, come on, hit the ridge, hit the ridge. You know, because I, I had this in mind because, uh, man, there was all these awesome clouds. If you remember those clouds that just kept like moving through and they were just had so much texture and, you know, it, it was just so neat to see them. And I had this picture in my mind of this caribou on this ridge, but he just wouldn't make it like he just wouldn't go up there. I was so frustrated. And finally, I like looked down the road and it, I, I I realized that the road's sloping down. I'm like. I wonder if I start walking down the road, if I'll actually get the perspective that I'm looking for and get this guy silhouetted on the ridgeline. And uh, I remember start walking down. I got so excited when I, when I got there, I was like, Oh, you know, it was just like this uh, Zen moment of like, this was it and uh, took the shot. And man, I was so happy with how this one ended up Um, because it's, you know, the, the, the joy you get and the thrill you get of like when you have something in your mind and you want to make it happen, you know, you want to like, oh, yeah. just like, you've got to get it and uh, for it to actually work out and like to make it is such an amazing thrill. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember how excited you are. You are for sure. And, uh, you know, you had your, I think it was your 500 with the teleconverter on. Yeah. And so you were, you had a slightly different perspective in terms of composition than what I had. Uh, in, in my mind, it was like, you know, there, there's not a lot I can do with this situation. <laughs> you just start marching down the road. You're like, <laughs> I've got a plan. This is all going to work out. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'll come along. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sure enough. And you nailed it. And I, I tried the similar with my 500 mil, but you know, just not the, I don't have the megapixels or the sharpness to really get the same kind of composition, but yeah, man, uh, that's just one of those situations, you know, you got to stick to that vision. Yeah. Yeah. But I just love the texture in the clouds. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it was a, a bit of a, a slope, you know, so you, you d- did a little bit of rotation there, but I, I didn't even realize how perfect of a, a kind of rounded edge, uh, just, just a perfect little foreground for your shot. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just think it's so well balanced. Yeah. It's awesome. Thanks, man. So much fun. That, that was an amazing, uh, amazing trip. And I wish I could have packed more photos from that trip uh, into here, but uh, some other ones snudged it out. So <laughs> we'll <Sure. move> on. <laughs> I think you'll recognize that one. Uh, we both had a, a, a bit of a different perspective than that. And um, I got a little bit of a wider shot, I think, just because I had the 2470 on. Um, but yeah, like we don't need to rehash all the details of it, but what a what a incredible opportunity that these uh the set and sun so yeah june 
when was it? No, it wasn't June. It was May. Uh, yeah, May 5th, early May. So what time was this like 10, 10 30, something like that. Or, or it was, it was in the evening for sure later. And, um, you can see the sun like poking through the clouds there, creating this like amazing, glorious sun, you know, sun rays. And yeah, just couldn't, couldn't ask for better. So, uh, but it's interesting, the different perspectives that we both had, you know, that, that we were able to capture. And so it makes them different. Uh, and yet, you know, you can tell that it was the same, uh, same spot, you know, but I'm, I, I like the fact that we all, we both caught something that was, uh, unique enough in our own right so that we didn't have come away with the same exact image. Cause that would have been boring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it just comes down to the editing process. And I think this is kind of a similar, uh, style as that last moose shot at the airport. Uh, it's a lot of kind of suggested detail. You're not necessarily bringing out all the shadows and the Eagle, but you don't yeah. need to, you know, yep. you've got all the important stuff and, yeah, it's kind of a minimalist edit, which is just sweet. Nice to see the difference too, because I went for more of a, you know, bring out some of this detail in the face and, and all that. Uh, yeah, I kept it kind of darker on that. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So, so fun. That was definitely a highlight, like once an oppor- once in a lifetime opportunity for a shot like that. And uh, had I been holding my 500, like I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have gotten that, you know, so having the right gear at the right time really mattered here in this case. Yeah. Oh, here, this one, <laughs> this one made it. So, so funny, like the, we had a bunch of owls last year, uh, great, great owls around Anchorage. And, um, this one, how, several of them actually ended up getting hit by cars, which is really tragic. Um, but this one was working a trail system. And at one point he flew up on these spruce trees and everybody else was, you know, I'm shooting with several other people cause you can't avoid that sometimes in these situations. And, uh, everybody was shooting up from the parking lot. And I saw that the road was right there. And I was like, I wonder if I can get a better perspective from the road. Cause that's what I really wanted was something a little cleaner, not shooting up from it. Uh, not shooting up at it with just a blue sky background or whatever background it was. Uh, it was getting later in the day. So I'd opted to like climb up on the, uh, on the elevated road and uh, found a really great uh, position. And he kept looking back at me and then all of a sudden he took off. And uh, a lot of the other photos that I got were like clipped wings and some other stuff, you know, just cause I, like I had too much lens for him, but this one, like the one shot where his wings all fit in the frame and uh, that intensity of his eyes and stuff. So, and I got him backlit too, which was really cool. And that's what I was kind of going for was that kind of backlit look, um, which comes through there in the wing. So I, I was super stoked and I, nobody else got a shot like this. So that makes me happy too. I think these guys are known as the Phantom of the North. Yeah. And uh, this shot definitely conveys that. Just, uh, yeah, I love that backlight. So soft through the wings and, uh, man, it's just such a crisp shot. Was this with the Z9? Yeah. Cause I don't think my, uh, Z6 II would have nailed this focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, like I've got some where this bird was flying past me and all I got was his head and I like, get sharp. This is, it was just nuts, but, um, yeah, I liked I liked this one the best. This was definitely my favorite. So, That's wild. Dynamic pose, you know. But yeah. Um it was a unique year last year for for Great Grace. So we don't get that all the time. Move yeah. on. There we go. Another another choice to throw on the 2470 instead of um the big lenses. And I'm so glad I did. I started, this was, uh, this was when Ray Hennessy was up here and, uh, we were up in Hatcher's pass and found this huge flock of snow geese up there, which was so random. Like I've never seen them there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, I haven't either all the years I've been going up there and I've never seen them up there and here's this flock of them. So I'm sneaking up on them. There's this boulder, um, 
And so I figure I can go, like go down this little gully and sneak right back up and like get it, get right out to this uh, boulder, which was right in front of them. And I did, I managed to, to like make my way up there. And so I'm shooting them from behind this boulder and uh, I must have like picked myself up just a little bit more and it spooked them and they all flushed and like, I already had focus on one. So I just like held down the shutter and <laughs> ended up getting this wide angle shot of them just you know, just flushing out. So uh, I was super thrilled with how this one actually ended up. After I was looking at it from the rear, um, you know, my viewfinder, I was super excited to what I ended up with. Yeah, man, this is, uh, it's got to be one of my favorite shots of yours. It's just, uh, it's, it's one of those shots you really just could never expect to reproduce uh the stocking involved the i mean it, it it's certainly possible with a camera trap you know you could you could kind of piece together how that could be possible but man for you to actually be there holding the camera in a shot like this with a 24 to 70 is just nuts with how skittish snow geese are yeah yeah it was it was fun you know and one of the cool things i think about this for me is that like I hate a plain blue sky. It just, yeah, it's, it's boring. So the fact that I got some like really cool texture in the sky just made it so much better, you know, the location helped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It certainly does. So yeah, definitely very happy. Yeah. With that. Well done. Thank you. Moving on. Uh, this is another one of our outings. You came up and uh, we were yeah, you were with me for this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we went up uh, for doll sheep. It was doll sheep season. November twenty second is the date on that one. And uh, man, I saw this happening. I, I think we both saw it. And uh, he, I, I think at one point, like he kicks her, <laughs> like he like used his hoof to kind of like nudge her. And uh, I saw her look back at one point, but I wasn't ready for it. And I was just like, man, do it again, do it. Again. You know, I wanted her to look back so, so bad. Um, and then it happened again and I was, I was ready for it, but I loved the perspective here because these cliffs are so just like sheer, uh, ah, oh man, it just, they, they look deadly, you know, like they're so up and down and I love that she's right there in that bit of uh, greenery and everything about it like got me so excited and so i made this composition like uh vertical and um i wanted to tell the story of you know how they their, their habitat and and where they can be found and just like how amazing it is they can scale rocks like this and then having that little tender moment between the two was just like icing on the cake so i was really thrilled when when this happened again yeah and you were you know kind of throwing out some ideas as as that went down and uh you, you were fully vocalizing that this was about to happen and that was that was your your dream shot right there and uh and i i don't have that shot you know that was just one of those opportunities that that you were able to see in the situation maybe it could have been lens choice could have been a whole bunch of things but yeah there was a you had the vision for it and it, it definitely worked out. I mean, cause we had been watching the sheep go up and down the cliffs, you know, for an hour or two at that point. And, right. and so nothing really particularly that stood out to me. It was all kind of very flat lighting. Um, you know, it's always fun to have these interactions between the, you and the Ram, but yeah, it's, it's just a, a moment that I, you know, completely passed by me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, I was pretty excited about it for sure. So yeah, I was looking at my data here and it says 700 millimeters. So I had my uh, teleconverter on for that one, which helped. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes it's good to have that. <laughs> it does have its advantages. Noted. <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah. Yeah, this was that, I think this is that same bear that you had, but, uh, and I have some, photos that I loved from when we were sitting there when it was bathing and that and whatnot, but, um, getting this one of it a little bit more, um, 
And the, this was when the sky was starting to light up a little bit more. I know you had some of that purple and pink, and this was after the sun was up a little bit. It was starting to peek through the clouds and over the mountains a bit more. And uh, I remember that fog coming up off the water and it just kind of lit up. And so I went for this like silhouette and I think it like, I, I'm really happy with how that one turned out. Magical. Moment. Yeah, man. Stunning. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I remember we were trying to kind of get ahead of, of where he was headed to. Yeah, that's try to right. Line we were like up. scrambling. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, always an interesting situation when you're dealing with a brown bear. But, right. you know, he didn't seem to mind us much. And, uh, yeah. He kind of kept he, his distance. He got in the right place for sure. <laughs> yeah. He did. Yeah. 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 And then he decided to kind of head back to the beach and ended up taking a completely different route than he came in on. Right. But yep. Yeah. What a, what a magical morning. <laughs> it was, it was, I think it gave us both like plenty of interesting photos on that morning. So that was really cool. Yeah. Tough lighting though. You know, a lot of that was just so dark. <laughs> yeah, it was like pushed the, the eye. So, yep. Another moose here oh. made it in the top 10. And I, I liked this one because uh, I've never seen this before. Like, I, you know, you've seen like uh, red deer with ferns and stuff uh, adorning their antlers. And I think I've seen it with like um, uh, white-tailed deer or black-tailed deer um, where they've got some stuff in their antlers. But like, I've never seen a moose with more than just like a twig or something like yeah. that. So like when this guy showed up with all of this grass in his in his antlers, I was like, I got to I got to get this, you know? Like <laughs> it was unreal. So so interesting. Like I've ne just never seen that before and just had to had to get it, you know? No kidding. <laughs> so how long did he have this stuck in his antlers? Was oh, it a, a pretty while, quick yeah. moment? Yeah. Okay. Good, yep. And this particular area, um, I think this was the the first year I've really noticed them in this area, but the grass in, in there is so tall. I, it's got to be six feet in some places. And so uh, it's, you know, if they're going to rack their antlers back and forth, you know, in a show of force or trying to intimidate other bulls, of course, they're, you know, they're going to just get tangled up in this grass. It's going to rip off, of course, because just the brute strength that they have and, you know, end up with... Uh, salad hanging from their antlers so <laughs> yeah yeah the, it was so yeah cool. the original pitchfork yep it was cool watching them too because what they do is like they kind of wobble their head you know as intimidation so he's wobbling his head with all this grass and it's just like yeah it was awesome so that was that was a really cool morning it's an awesome moment to capture for sure i've seen them with like you know dead grass here and there but yeah that that just makes the photo just the greenery. Yep. Yeah, it's just something different, you know. It's it's that thing that's different. Um, and I think that's what, one of the things that uh, you and I both try for is doing the thing that's different or getting, you know, trying to go for those shots that are different that nobody else is getting, you know. And I had to scramble for this photo, like I had to really work for it and run to where I, I thought I had the best opportunity to capture it. And, um, uh, you know, that's what it takes sometimes to, to really get in there and, and work hard for what the vision that you see and to try to make it different than anybody else. Cause there was other photographers, uh, in that field shooting these moose, but, um, I wanted to do it different. So. Yeah, it's amazing what difference it makes just moving one or two feet over to the left or right and yep. just how like drastically different. Whatever. Yeah. So many photographers can be in the same area, just getting completely different shots. Yeah. All right. Move on here. This was from our first trip to Denali. And uh, again, Caribou made it a couple times into my top 10 just because like I, they had been on my list for so long. I'd been wanting them. And uh, it was so funny because we had spent like, what, like two days in the park by this time. And we had gotten that, 
that caribou up on the ridge line. I think that was the first day. And then the second day, we had those two nice bulls that were inside the uh, past the guard shack there on at the Savage River. And then like we're coming by on the bus and we see this guy like at the Savage River and we're both flipping out like, holy cow. And the bus, I swear, the bus could not get back to the depot fast enough. <laughs> right. I remember we were just both like, let's go. We stopped for a cow moose and we were both just like, are, are you kidding? This is a cow moose. Let's go. <laughs> and then like, right. we got we got to the car and we're like hustling. We got behind like some slow people and it was just like, ah. <laughs> And then uh, we finally get to the Savage River and yep, he's still there. And so like, man, we spent like a good hour with this bull and he just didn't seem to care. Like he was just hanging out. It was, it was amazing. Oh yeah. No, he was, uh, he was so cooperative. And if people don't know, uh, Savage River is kind of the the last leg that you can get to by car, uh, at least this last season. And so, yeah. Uh, it was really just only possible because he he showed up in this particular spot. If he was just over the hill, we wouldn't have really had this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, I, I love the little bits of poor fireweed in the foreground too. You know that that really just <laughs> brings the whole thing together. Yeah, and I really appreciate how soft he went with the editing here because I mean I have some similar shots, but I think I just went way too harsh, like trying to get some of the cloud detail back and all that sometimes you just got to embrace the soft lighting (laughs) yeah yeah that's true i i wish um this is one example where like i'm right at the limit of like getting getting i don't know a little bit more environment like this was with my 500 millimeter and i think i would have liked to have him a little bit smaller in the frame and just get a little bit more sky in there but like i'm still really happy with how it turned out because i have everything so I don't like cutting off legs and, um, you know, I, I don't generally like to cut off stuff unless it's like an intentional, you know, uh, bust shot or something like that. But like for this one, I definitely wanted all of them in there. So, um, ideally, like, I think I would have loved to have a little bit more environment, but like, yeah, can't really complain too much. Yeah. Only so many factors you can control, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, you choose what you choose and then you go with it. Like we said, you know, so, but you know, all in all that definitely satisfied at least for now, like my my craving for caribou and like, it's weird, man, because like I had wanted to shoot them so bad for so long. And like, they, I think quickly became like one of my favorite animals to photograph. I just, I think they're so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Are they still pretty high up there? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think uh, I'd rather shoot them than just, yeah. 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 You know, so, but uh, yeah, I'd love to get them in. Especially these Denali bulls. Sorry. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. They're so, you know, yeah, they're huge. I'd love to get them. Like, I'm totally jealous of your beautiful shot in the fall foliage. So that's a goal. And then I'd love to get them in the snow as well. So, um, there's definitely opportunities in the future for, uh, expanding on, on my uh caribou portfolio cool man ready for the last one oh yeah <laughs> all right i'm gonna round out my top no top idea what it is of 2022 oh <laughs> yeah i thought so that was this year that was yep makes uh, sense man december 13th yeah there was so there's this little pond where i was staying with uh I, so my family and i went down to florida uh, for a month. So we left December 11th. So this was like two days into my trip, right? Uh, we got down there December 11th and, um, we or yeah, December 11th, we left January 11th and, uh, my mom's got this pond by her house and we were staying with my mom there. And, uh, I would just go to this pond all the time. There was like black bellied whistling ducks and there was a, a great egret and this little little blue heron showed up all the time and a bunch of other birds around and i'm just shooting this uh great egret and then this little blue heron comes in and so i start shooting him and then all of a sudden his head goes down and he pops back up with this little i uh, i believe this is a little bass and uh like it was it was crazy you know like i was like I was in shock actually of like, what? He's got this little 
little fish going and uh yeah it was just it was so unexpected but um it was a great way to end the year you know with this shot and just the fact that uh the Z9's eye autofocus uh, came through for me here. You know, it didn't latch onto the fish's eye, which I think probably would have been fine. But I really like the fact that it it nabbed the bird's eye here because um, I love the intensity in the bird's eyes, you know, and it's just like, got it. <laughs> what are you looking at? You know, kind of a thing. So uh, I was super thrilled with this shot, man. I was so happy when I was looking through and I got it. And, uh, you know, I don't have anything like this. So to be able to get something like this, like two days into my trip, I was like, yeah, this is going to be a good trip. You know, like this, it was already good. So, oh yeah, man, I was thrilled. He crushed it. So were you kind of watching him dip down and were you, were you taking photos that whole time? And, and as yeah, you, yeah, see so him I've got him up, just his head, his sure. head up there, you know, but like when he popped up with that, I was like, oh man, too good. So you didn't really know what he came up with until you kind of had the photos already. Well, yeah, I saw, I saw it. I saw him. You know, he was bobbing and kind of poking around and hunting and then his head went down and I'm waiting and then like up, up, he popped with that. So, oh man. Yeah. It yeah. What a colorful little fish too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it just perfectly complements his colors, you know, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Yep. Oh, killer, man. You've been hanging on to that one for a couple months. <laughs> well, I just edited it edit it yeah i so i didn't edit any photos when i was in florida i just i basically took them off my uh my cards throw them on a hard drive that i brought down and uh went back to shooting cleared off my cards and stuck them back in and so i was racking them up and so i haven't started editing until i got back to alaska um so i've got a ton of photos to go through on top of photos that like i didn't edit from last year you know bears and moose all kinds of stuff that i still have yet to edit and usually like december is like my time when i usually go back through stuff and like edit it up and um any missed gems or you know at least a lot of the the brunt of stuff that i'll, I'll like kind of go through and and pick out stuff that i never edited or shared and and uh and do that but uh seeing how i went to florida in december um yeah that's gonna leave me you know i racked up a bunch of photos so i'm gonna be editing for a while so um my outings might be limited here for the next month or two, but that's okay. Um, I've got a few ideas in mind for some stuff, but other than that, like I'm content to kind of uh, edit what I've got here and, you know, get out here once in a while. So, well, it seems like you're usually pretty on top of taking care of your backlog and, and figuring out, you know, what are some of these gems that I might've missed a couple years back yeah. for me? It's like, if I didn't think about it in the moment, then I'm probably never going to go look back at that photo. You know, I mean, every now and then I will, but yeah. a lot of times if I don't go to edit it right away, then yeah. it, it just doesn't mean as much to me. But yeah, I, I'm not saying there's, you know, I'm not saying that's the right way at all, but that's just how my brain works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, totally, man. Yeah. I, you know, what? it's funny because I, I think I get bored or something and like, uh, you know, if I haven't shot anything for a week or two or, or whatever it is, you know, I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember you know, maybe there was some on this day or, or something, or occasionally like I'll have one that just, I never got around to editing that I'll just kind of log in my brain of, I'm going to come back to that one at some point. And so, uh, like that goshawk we were talking about, you know, that, that goshawk and Kodiak and I had my 70 to 200, I ended up with a photo that I think I'm going to really like. Uh, because turns out that using my 70 to 200, I was able to get a lot of the, uh, really great, um, scene, you know, instead of like getting a close up of the goshawk, like I really got a nice, I, you know, I did, I went for portrait orientation. I was able to include like the mountains in the background and some of the surrounding stuff. So I think it's a photo that's going to end up really cool. I just need like, haven't edited it yet, you know? So um i'll get to that eventually you know but i've got like so many from florida that i've got to get through still so um yeah. well i i think if you shoot enough then you're gonna run into that problem yeah that's yeah. uh yeah I've, I've gotten more and more in that direction over the years you know just getting out shooting constantly every week it's it's impossible impossible to stay on top of unless you're ray hennessy <laughs> <laughs> 
Ray, man, yeah. he's a he's a machine when it comes to that stuff. Like, but he's got a really good workflow, and he says, you know, he's like, uh, I think he's a lot more like you in terms of like if he doesn't do it now and and at least get it started, then he's not, you know, like not likely to come back to it just because he shoots so much. But like he'll do all his color correcting and all of his, you know, selections of images and, you know, discards and everything uh, right away. Like he just takes care of it. And then um, he'll go back to stuff eventually to, you know, just to like finish it up here and there. But like at least he's got it to a point of like he can go to it easily and quickly and and not have to do much because he's already taken care of most of it. So which is yeah, and he's also categorizing things yeah, and okay right like organizing rating, and labeling yeah. all that yeah madman yeah <laughs> not on that level yet <laughs> yeah raise on another level for sure mine's more of a binary system <laughs> you know it's it mine's, stays or it doesn't <laughs> yeah mine's a scattered mess is what mine is just throw them yeah. on a hard drive and edit them up by date you know <laughs> like look through there oh did i miss one so yeah man well it's 2023 um the sky's the limit here. What are some things you're looking forward to from uh, this coming year? And I mean, I know we've got uh, you and I have a couple of trips planned, uh, including one was speaking of Ray, we're, we're planning a trip with Ray, but uh, what else you got planned this year? What are you excited about? Oh, that's a big one for sure. Yeah. We're heading back to Nome in June. Yeah. And uh, I just, tremendous luck last year so i'm pretty excited about some of the musk ox opportunities and of course all the migratory birds really want to get the blue throat especially because oh. that's something i saw but i think i was just a few miles short of actually reaching the area where they really tend to hang out and where you can get some nice photos so definitely uh looking forward to revisiting some of the species i kind of overlooked there as well nice um yeah, and then I've got some northern lights planned in March. I'm heading up, uh, guiding somebody up there, and gonna look around for some foxes. Uh, might make our way down to Delta Junction and shoot some of the bison there, and I hopefully find my, some hawk. Out. I think I'm going with you on that trip. Did we talk about that? Uh, we or have talked least, about a lot of different trips. I think but... we talked about going up to Delta Junction or something at some point during during that time period. It might be not be that particular one, but you know, we sure, yeah, going up there for bison and and whatnot. So, yeah, no, I, I was thinking February for a long time. I was trying to wrangle some other folks to do a trip with, but uh, yeah, this this might be a separate trip. Yeah work out the details but yeah. that's definitely a, a one of that i'm pretty stoked about just the northern lights opportunities and we're gonna try to do something pretty crazy and and get the northern lights with the ice cave out in the delta junction oh, castner nice. ice cave uh so that's that's kind of a shot i haven't really seen before um and you know i, I mostly do wildlife th these days but i'll still never pass up a, an opportunity to go chase the Northern lights and Fairbanks where they're known to be out. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a good time. Yeah. That sounds cool. Especially like if you get a vision for like a shot that you have in mind and like, it kind of gets you excited for being able to, you know, crush it when you finally get it. So. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. yeah and then in the, in the next couple of months, I'm going to start really trying to track down some solid owls around here. Uh, Nice. We just get so many down East End Road and up by my house, even. Yeah. Uh, I've heard three or four calling in one night just right outside my property. So I put up a owl box the other day. Uh, fingers crossed, but <laughs> I don't have high expectations. Usually it takes a couple years and, you know, five or six for them to really choose one. Nice. But uh, yeah, if I could find like a natural cavity in one of the aspens or birches, cottonwoods around here. You know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be keeping tabs on that because there really aren't a whole lot. Uh, we have so much spruce in this area. Uh, honestly, it confuses me, uh, why there are so many sawits and, and some boreal owls out here because mm. they need those natural cavities. And, uh, and so I think if I do find a good one, it's bound to be a, an owl's home at some point. Nice. But uh, yeah, even to just track some down, uh, listening early in the morning and uh, getting eyes on one, you know, they're just such incredible owls. So uh, 
yeah, that's a, that's an exciting prospect to yeah. kind of get a better handle on the owl situation here this spring. Cool. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah. Aside from, uh, aside from, uh, gnome with Ray and you and Emily, um, I'm hoping to do Denali in September. Um, I, yeah, like staying up there, taking the bus in, I think that's the way to go. So, um, uh, I'm going to hope to do that. Um, yeah, of course, coming down to see you down Homer. I think we're going to do some workshops down there. So that'll be fun and, uh, probably do some moose workshops this year together. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things going on. So lots of opportunities out to get out there and, uh, make some magic and, you know, experience Alaska. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good year. Definitely think so. Yeah. It's been a good start to the year at least. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Like starting out in Florida for me was, was fun. And then I've already gotten out a couple of times. I think I've gotten uh, a wax wing shot or two, uh, a roughed grouse that was hanging around in a, like a, what else? A, a gray Jay, you know, Canada Jay that was out a nice frosty branch. So, you know, it's cool. Uh, a good way to start. So yeah, getting out yeah. the cold. <laughs> yeah, go find some river otters. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. love to see those guys again. I gotta yeah, make a trip so up there. Yep. Oh, did I tell you I saw one in uh in Florida? There was a little Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw your live video. Yeah. Yeah, you're just it was so chatting cute. away as he was hanging out in this yeah. culvert. <laughs> yeah, it was that was so cool. Yeah, he was just hanging out. So I think I maybe got a shot or so that I like of him, but it was fun seeing him nice. around in this uh, little pond. And then my kids came out and they were all watching him. And my daughter just like fell in love with this little guy. And yeah, it was, it was really cool to see him. So, but uh, yeah, getting him on the snow and the ice is fun too. So we'll see. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 All right, man. Well, uh, dude, crushed it, man. Great images as always. And uh, looking forward to all the stuff that's going on this year. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll be doing some stuff that's uh, going to be a good time and and bring some great images this year. So maybe we'll have to do it next year again and share some highlights of 2023. You know, I think this should be a thing for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can kill it too, man. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man. And uh, I think we'll uh, we'll probably release some workshops in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, put some stuff together. And then uh, our next thing is um, you're you're kicking off your channel, so you're gonna yep. get your YouTube started. So uh, we'll put a link to that uh, down below in the description. But uh, yeah, we're gonna edit each other's photos, which is gonna be super fun because we have a little bit of a different style editing. So it'll be fun as to you've see. seen. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun to see one of my photos uh, edited in uh, your style and one of your photos edited in my style and uh see how they turn out so um that'll be fun we'll we'll have that uh mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks here probably and uh, throw those editing videos up on each other's channels and uh yeah you guys will be able to check those out so it'll be fun that'll be a fun one for sure yeah, yeah. all right man all right man <laughs> yeah We'll talk to you soon. Everybody, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. All right. See you.